the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Silver McGee and Molly with Donald Novis, Bill Thompson, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Fine and Dandy. often notice how important floors are to the appearance of a home, it is a fact that mellow, gleaming waxed floors bring out the beauty of everything in the room, adding a rich charm that you can acquire in no other way. Throughout America, there are countless floors that have been made more beautiful every year with genuine Johnson's Wax. Every application of this famous wax polish gives increased protection and beauty. Johnson's Wax gets right down into the pores of the wood, seals out dirt, protects the finish against scuffing feet and sharp heels, and does away forever with tiresome floor scrubbing. There are more than 100 labor-saving uses for Johnson's Wax in your home. It protects and beautifies furniture and woodwork, window sills, parchment lampshades, leather goods. You'll find these extra uses listed on the familiar red and yellow package of genuine Johnson's Wax paste or liquid. Try some tomorrow. When the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder is in the shock, when the squirrels are hiding peanuts under every log and rock, when mint fire returns to menus and the stores dust off the holly, here's autumn, here's October, and here's F. McGee and Molly. McGee, look at those leaves out there on the front lawn. Why it's disgraceful. I thought you were going to rake them up today. Oh, what's the hurry, Molly? It took them seven months to fall down. I guess they can wait an hour to be raked up. <laughs> well, now I tell you, Mr. Gildersleeve next door has been complaining. Oh, that guy. He said our leaves keep blowing over in his yard. Well, what am I supposed to do? Arrange for the wind to blow down some other street? Just I can't control well, the Well, the fact remains, McGee. You promised to rake up those leaves today. Can't do it, Molly. Not today. Why not? The rake's busted. <laughs> Who busted it? Oh, well, it ain't exactly busted. <laughs> Matter of fact, I used the handle to put up a trapeze in the garage. <laughs> and you know what, Molly? I chinned myself nine times this morning. Oh, well, I'll okay. take my hand. Well, if you think you're going to chin yourself out of raking up those leaves, you're better. Come in. Listen, Mrs. McGee. Yes? Did you read The Grapes of Wrath? <laughs> what if we did, bud? Who are you? Oh, just one of the bunch. Wow! <laughs> Of all the silly... Say, I hear one of the moving picture companies has bought that book, McGee. No, if they don't work faster on that than they did on Gone with the Wind, they'll have to call it the Raisins of Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're off the subject again, dearie. What subject? Breaking up the leaves. Oh, that's okay. I was tired of it anyway. <laughs> McGee, I believe you're just plain lazy. Oh, you wrong, Miss McGee. Physical activity in itself ain't important. No, it isn't. Why, no. A rooster can strut around flapping his wings and crowing, but it's the quiet little hen sitting around all day who really produces. <laughs> well, now, if you can sit there and hatch out some way to get those leaves raked up without a hole. Come in. Oh, it's Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, hi, Gil. What can I do for you? You can keep your old dead leaves on your own front lawn, McGee. That's what you can do for me. Oh, is that so? What do you want me to do, run out and lay a paperweight on every leaf? Don't be ridiculous. I realize you can't keep the leaves from falling off the tree. Oh, you admit that? Yes, I do. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. Oh, oh. gentlemen, gentlemen. 
I don't think it's worth quarreling about. Well, I do, Mrs. McGee. So do I, Molly. Come on, Gildersleeve, let's quarrel. All right. Now look here, McGee. Why don't you do as the rest of the homeowners, Miss Block, do? Ah. Keep your lawn raked up. Every time I clean my lawn, the next morning I find your leaves have blown it over again. Well, so what? Am I a truant officer for dead leaves? A traffic cop for tired foliage? <laughs> That's not the point, McGee. Furthermore, I don't like your attitude. Oh, you don't. And how would you describe my attitude? Sitting down gently. I think your attitude is definitely antagonistic. Oh, you're too fussy, Gildersleeve. Yes, I am fussy. Well, I take a great deal of pride in the appearance of my property, McGee. Well, I can understand that, but do we complain because your lilac bushes smell up the whole neighborhood? <laughs> no. You mind your yard and we'll mind our yard. Well, why don't you then? Well, I, uh, uh, well, I like leaves flying around loose, that's why. It's more informal. I don't want to interfere with nature. I suppose I interfere with nature. Well, I heard a rumor one day that you gave your morning glories a balling out for opening up ten minutes late. <laughs> please, gentlemen, please, this is no way for good neighbors to talk. Ah, we ain't good neighbors. We're enemies. Ain't we, Gildersleeve? Yes, we are. You betcha. The best of enemies. <laughs> You think I'm a stuffed shirt, and I think you're a gabby little good-for-nothing runt. There, you see, Molly? You don't find me and Gildersleeve indulging in no sentimental hands across the back fence dribble. Mrs. McGee, your husband is impossible. I am not. I may be a little improbable, but I ain't impossible. Well, I think I can assure you, Mr. Gildersleeve, that our yard will be raked up today, sure. Ah, uh, thank you. Incidentally, Gildersleeve, uh... You got a rake I can borrow? I have a rake, but I'm using it oh. to take your leaves from my yard. And I'm dumping them all back over the hedge onto your lawn. My leaves, eh? Yes, your leaves. You admit they're mine, eh? Admit it? Of course I admit it. Okay, then I warn you, Gildersleeve. I'm very proud of them leaves. And if I find any of them damaged when you send them back... <laughs> You know, I kind of like that guy, Molly. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't get to know him sooner. Think of the swell arguments we've missed. <laughs> Say, aren't you ashamed, dearie? Huh? You should try and keep on good terms with your neighbors. You don't get far without friends, you know. Well, you don't have much excitement without enemies, either. But maybe you're right. I'll call up Mrs. Uppingham and see if she's got a rake I can borrow. Hand me the phone. Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me wistful vista 670... Oh, is that you, Mert? <laughs> Fibber McGee. Give me Mrs. Uppington. Oh, the line's busy, eh? Well, how's everything, Mert? Oh, no. Huh? Who? Your sister, eh? Got pinched, eh? Heavenly good. What? What's that, Mert? Oh, she was bound to get caught sooner or later. Did you get her out? Oh. Huh? Oh, I see. No, I won't say anything about it. Okay, Mert. What do you know about that, Molly? What happened? Mert's sister had on one of them new bustle dresses and got pinched going through a revolving door. isn't getting the leaves raked up. Huh? Oh, yeah, the leaves. Well, I'll run over to Uppingdon's and borrow a rake. I'll be right back, Molly. I better go with you. Why, Molly, do, do you think I'd try to evade raking up them leaves? Don't you trust me? Oh, yes, I guess I do, dearie. Well, you better come anyway. I don't trust myself. <laughs> Let's go.
And I will be raking, raking all oh, fall. Don't rake so hard, McGee. You're tearing up the grass. Okay, all right. Hello there, Johnny. Hello, daughter. How you fixed for cider? Only 60 cents a gallon. Nothing like it to liven you up at a Halloween party. <laughs> Matter of fact, there's nothing like it to lively me up. <laughs> In other words, there's nothing like it. <laughs> no, thank you, Mr. Oldtimer. I don't believe we want any. Hey! She says we don't want any, Oldtimer. Besides, I swore off that stuff. Not only sneaks up on you, it follows you around for four days. <laughs> I ain't only seen them, I just got my wife a job as chambermaid in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry you don't want any cider, kids. It's good for what oils you, or ails you. <laughs> that old fossil, I'd like to meet that guy outside some bright night, Molly. Why, McGee? Well, I think ruins are much prettier by moonlight. <laughs> On side there, Mrs. McGee. You bother me. Oh, look up there, McGee. Huh? There goes a flock of geese flying south for the winter. Oh, describe them to me, Molly. I'm too busy raking. <laughs> Never mind. But I wonder how it is that the geese always know which way is south. <laughs> That's easy. They follow the robins. Oh, how do the robins know? They look back and see the geese. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? I said, oh, oh, look, here comes Harlow Wilcox. I wonder what he wants. Well, you know very well what he wants. He wants to sneak in some advertising. Let's cross him up. Okay, McGee. Every time he starts selling, we'll change the subject. Okay. Well, hello there, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Molly. Hello, Fibber. Cleaning up the lawn, eh? You betcha, Harlow. And speaking of lawn, did you know that the trapdoor spider conceals his nest so cleverly that sometimes he can't even find it himself? Can't find his own home, eh? Yeah. Well, that's what he gets for hiding it. Maybe he's ashamed of it. I think people should be proud of their home. And if everybody used Johnson's wax to beautify and protect their floors... Say, uh, speaking of pride, Mr. Wilcox, did you know that in some parts of Africa it is still a matter of pride with the natives to eat their enemies? Oh, cannibalism. Oh, there's some of that in this country, too. People are eaten here every day. What? Why, sure. Eaten by envy when they see how their friends' homes are kept so shining and clean with such a minimum of effort with Johnson's wax. Why, do you... Which reminds me, Harlow, did you know that in thinking, the human mind throws off a definite electrical charge? Is that so? Positive or negative? Well, uh, we... Well, the reason I asked is that a thought about wood floors and furniture would positively be negative on anything but Johnson's wax. Because it's the finest protective wax that money can buy, you see. Isn't he terrific, folks? <laughs> that guy finds more openings than a marble in a fishnet. <laughs> How about giving me a hand raking up these leaves, Harlow? Oh, sorry, pal. I haven't got time. But I'm glad to see you doing it. Yeah. Because I think the outside of a house should be just as attractive and beautiful as the inside. And if Johnson's wax for... Oh, excuse me. Here comes my bus. I'll see you later, folks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I wish you were as interested in your work as he is in his, McGee. Uh, any guy with that much faith in his product ought to be testing parachutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing you're not. Why? You'd probably land right here in the yard right on your dead leaves. Oh, there, McGee. I'm glad to see you're finally raking those leaves up. Listen, Gildersleeve, let you and me play Stanley and Livingston. Uh, Stanley and Livingston? Yeah, only with a new twist. Let's pretend we never discovered each other. <laughs> oh, McGee, please. That's all right, Mrs. McGee. If that's the way he wants it. I merely saw him waking up these leaves, so I came over to bury the hatchet. Oh, skip it, Gildersleeve. When a guy wants to bury the hatchet, he usually has got an axe to grind. <laughs> now go away and let me work, will you? Oh, come, come, boys. After all, we're neighbors, you know. Well, sure. My, my, all this fuss over a pile of dead leaves. There'll be no dead leaves on his family tree. It's too sappy. Oh, yeah. And there's a cuckoo nest someplace in yours, too. Is that so? Yes, that's so. M McGee, I didn't like that remark. <laughs> I don't think I like you either. I know I don't like your face. Oh, yeah. Uh, you want to make something of it? I'm too old for Halloween parties, or I'd like to make a mask of it. <laughs> Good day, McGee. <laughs> oh, 
that guy kills me, Mark. <laughs> well, that's the first bit of foresight you've shown for a long time, dearie. Oh, I'm just kidding him. Hey, there, little girl, quit playing in that pile of leaves. I just raked them up. Oh, gee, I'm just going to look for some pretty leaves, I bet you. Oh, oh. You are, eh? Hmm? I says you are, eh? Oh, uh, what? Going to look for some pretty leaves. Gee, that's a dandy idea. I guess I will, too. <laughs> Well, you were the one... Oh, 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 I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, sis, run along home and don't bother me. I got all these leaves to rake up. Say, mister, what makes leaves turn all different colors like this? What does? Why don't they stay green all the time? Well, they're only green in the spring and summer, sis. They always turn red in the fall. Why? That red? How should I know? Well, <laughs> well, I'll tell you, sis. You know what a stop-and-go sign is? Sure I do, I betcha. Well, leaves are nature's stop-and-go sign. Oh. Uh... Yeah. You see, sis, in the spring, <laughs> the leaves are green, and that means go. Uh... So the snow goes, and the cold goes, and little girls go out and play. Oh, uh, gee. Yeah. <laughs> then in the fall, the leaves turn red. That means stop. Stop and put on your mittens. Stop vacation from school. Stop and look for Santa Claus. Oh. <laughs> oh, goody. <laughs> you get the idea, sis? No. Mm. <laughs> well, what's the matter? Don't you understand? Yes, but I bet you you don't, I bet you. Huh? The real reason the leaves turn red in the fall is that... Subsequent to the autumn equinox, the diminishing power of the solar rays is inadequate to supply the necessary chlorophyll to the foliage, thus resulting in the phenomenon familiar to us all of brilliant coloration. <laughs> so don't give me any of that malarkey about stop and go, I... <laughs> Donald Novus gives us an old favorite of his and ours and yours. Diane. Take it, Don. I'm in heaven when I see you smile. Smile for me, my Diane. And though everything's dark over the Raking those leaves, dearie. I think there's a bit of a wind coming up. Okay. When I get all these leaves piled up and burned, Molly, you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to lean the rake up against the hedge with its teeth snarling into Gildersleeve's window. <laughs> Just to remind him that he. Well, for scream's sake, Fisher. 
What in the name of, for the love of Mike, are you doing laboring with manual? <laughs> Hello, Mr. DeFabulous. Oh, hi, Nick. Oh, I'm just raking up these leaves. You'll excuse me if I go right on working. We're afraid the wind will come up before I get through. Oh, that's hardly dirty, Fisher. And speaking of wind, I'm reading an awfully sweet little story last night in a book by a man named Egypt who is always writing a lot of fables. Oh, I think you mean uh, Aesop who wrote the fables. I think I do, too. <laughs> anyway, this story is being all about the north wind and the sun. And in the book, they are both able to talk, which is not true in real life. So if the son could talk, he would probably get off some hot stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean, and if you don't, neither of us is missing much. Maybe you better tell us later, Nick. I've got to get these leaves right up. Oh, you don't bother me, Fisher. I can tell you just as if you were loafing as usual. <clears throat> well, sir, it seems that the wind and the sun were having an argument about who is having the most strong personality. So they are deciding to take turns to make a traveling man take off his coat. The north wind is blowing and blowing with a half and a poof. And the man is only buttoning his coat all the more tighter. And then the sun is yes, tired. Yes, we know, and... Nick. The sun got hotter and hotter, and finally the guy took off his coat, and the sun won the bet. So what? Well, so it is all going to prove a little fact which is full of philosophy, poor Fisher. And the model of the story is being, arguments is being won by brightness, not by being a blowhard. <laughs> Say, hey. Hey. Hey, I, I think there is a windy breeze coming up. I better go raise the awning on my candy kitchen. Well, so long, Cupid. So long, Fizzer. <laughs> Heavenly days, McGee. The wind is getting stronger. That dreaded ain't that just my luck. And here I am on my last pile of leaves. Oh, oh dear. dear. There they go, McGee. I'm going to run in the house and close the window. You better hurry, Molly. It looks like a hurricane. Hey. Hey, Molly. Molly, come here. My, my, that was quite a blow, wasn't it, dearie? What did you want? Look at this lawn. Am I the sap? What did I rake my arms off for? Heavenly days, there isn't a leaf left, is there? No, not here. <laughs> Look over at Gildersleeve's yard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, piled up three feet deep. <laughs> McGee! Now look here, McGee. Oh, 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 the voice of experience. I've had about enough of this nonsense. Look at those leaves of yours in my lawn. Oh, well, what are you going to do about it, Gildersleeve? Have me pinched for blowing up a 40-mile gale in a 20-mile zone? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. But you could have raked those leaves up sooner. Oh. Look at my lawn. It's disgraceful. I'm going to see my lawyer about this, McGee. I'll take this to the United States Supreme Court. Well, the fallen leaves is unconstitutional. Maybe we don't... Oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Mr. McGee. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Uppington? Hi, Uppy. <laughs> May, that was quite a storm we had, wasn't it? Almost a typhoon. Typhoon. Pardon me? Typhoon, Mrs. Uppington. Typhoon. Yes, a tycoon is a big businessman. Yeah, like me. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Well, I suppose one big bag of wind is just the same. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pardon me, Mrs. Leffingwell, how rude of me. Uh, Mrs. McGee, may I present Mrs. Leffingwell? Uh, how do you do? How do you do, I'm sure. And uh, Mr. McGee, Mrs. Leffingwell, how, how do you do? How do you do? And Mrs. Uppington, this is Mr. Gilders, please. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? And uh, Mr. Leffingwell. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, how do you do? How do you do? <laughs> it's a pretty how do you do, ain't it, folks? <laughs> you say your name is Leffingwell, sis? Yes, Mrs. Wentworth Leffingwell. Oh, it's nice to know you, Lefty. Are you a pal of Uppies? Well, you might say so, Mr. McGee. I am working with Mrs. Uppington on a committee. Oh, how cozy. Now, won't uh, you ladies come in and have a cup of coffee? Oh, uh, thank you, no, Mrs. McGee. Uh, some other time, Mrs. McGee. I will, Mrs. McGee. She didn't ask you, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Nice of you to ask us, Mr. McGee, but really, this is more or less in the nature of a business call. Oh, okay, Uppy, here's your rake. I'd have brung it back if you'd have waited. Oh, I was not referring to the rake, Mr. McGee. Mrs. Livingwell and I are on the Better Homes and Gardens Committee of the Ladies' Club. Oh, yes, yes, the Ladies' Club. I believe my wife has spoken Quiet, about Quiet, Gildersleeve. Quiet. <laughs> Better Homes and Gardens, eh, Uppy? Well, if it's advice you're looking for, you come to the right place. 
I always was quite a hand with trees and flowers. And leaves. <laughs> yes, sir, I mind one time years ago, I had me one of the finest prune orchards in the country. Oh, not really. Fancy that. Yeah, fancy prunes, too. <laughs> My prunes were so big, they whipped every other grower at the state fair. Prune Whip McGee, I was known as in them days. <laughs> prune Whip McGee, the pinnacle of perfection as a producer of prunes, peaches, pears, and pomegranates, probably picking, packing, and purveying them to persnickety people who are pleased as punch to pay a pretty penny to possess such priceless packages of palatable products, and personally publicized as the premier paragon of the planet's profession from the pleasant parks of old Peoria to the pardon me, girls, is all this for you? <laughs> Charlotte didn't bore us a bit, Miss McGee. Uh, did it, Hildegard? Oh, very little, if any. <laughs> well, it bored me. Oh, well, you're too easily bored, Gildersleeve. A woodpecker could have fun with you. <laughs> Is that so? Oh, yes. now, now, gentlemen. As I remarked before, our club Better Homes and Gardens Committee have been making a survey to see who had the best kept lawn. Mm. And of all the lawns in the neighborhood, Mr. McGee, yours is by far the neatest. Here's... Oh, listen here, ladies. Hey, wait a minute. The committee has the floor, Gildersleeve. Oh, thank you. And so, Mr. McGee, we are happy to present you with this silver plaque for the best kept lawn in Whistful Oh, <laughs> well, my. Well, thanks. <laughs> Will you have your coffee now, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh! Uh, Fibber and Molly will be back in just a moment. And now I'd like to remind you again that if your kitchen floors are a problem to you, then try Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Nothing could be simpler than keeping floors clean and beautiful with this increasingly popular floor polish. Glow coat, you know, is self-polishing. That is, it polishes itself while it's drying without any work of rubbing or buffing. Twenty minutes after you put it on, your floors are sparkling and beautiful. Easy to keep clean, saving you hours of work. You can use glow coat on your varnished and painted wood floors as well as linoleum. The results are always satisfactory because of the uniform high quality of this famous product. Just try glow coat once and you'll never be without it. Spell G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T, glow coat, in the familiar yellow and red can everywhere. Molly, did you see that invitation we got to the NBC Halloween party? No, I didn't. Who's going to be there? Oh, everybody. Me and Bob Hope are handling the entertainment. Oh, you get paid? Oh, just the nominal sum. They get me for peanuts and Bob for apples. Oh. <laughs> Good night. Bob for apples. Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, Racine, Wisconsin, inviting you all to be with us again next week at this same time. Good night. The selection comes love is from Yoko Boy. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs>